So you are learning how to work with splines and you have created something in the construction script that looks something similar to this. And now you are looking for a way to use splines at runtime. So let's go on ahead and let's create a new actor. I'm going to name mine spline3 as I have been creating some other splines in this project already. And let's go on ahead and get into the event graph. So the first thing that we're going to need is our spline component. So over in the components, let's add a spline. And so now with our spline created, if I go on ahead and drag it into the world, I have my spline. But if I select play, we do not see our spline. So the first thing that we want to do in our event graph is we're going to use a node just for development purposes called execute console command. And the command is going to be show splines. Now, when we select play, we can see our spline. Next thing that we want to do is we want to manipulate the points of the spline so that I can move my mouse cursor around and that the spline point, that the second spline point will follow the mouse cursor. Let's go on ahead and get the spline reference and let's select set location at spline point. And let's go on ahead and put it into world space. Let's go on ahead and duplicate this. And for the second one, let's set it at spline point one. So we have point, first point and the second point. The first point, let's go on ahead and leave that right at the actor's location in the world, which is our default scene route. For this, let's go on ahead and get actor location. And for the second one, what I want to do is I want to use the get hit result under cursor by channel node. For this, we're going to need a reference to our player controller. So what we're going to do is let's drag our begin play over to make some space and let's get player controller. Let's cast to it and let's promote it to a variable. With our player controller reference created, let's go on ahead and get that. And now let's get our hit result under cursor by channel. Let's leave the trace channel to visibility, drag the hit result and get the break. We're going to use the location of the hit result as the location for spline point one. Finally, in order for this to update as we move our cursor, we're going to use a delay node. And we're going to loop that back to the set location at spline point. So now when we hit play, we have our spline where the second point is following the cursor. Now that we have our spline updating and following our cursor, let's go on ahead and add a spline mesh component. Let's go on ahead and attach our spline updates. And let's get these out of the way for the time being. Let's go on ahead and select add spline mesh component. And let's go ahead in the details panel and select what we want to use. I already have a simple square and it looks like 
this. Just a square and it has a material that, it ha that is blue with a little bit of translucency to it. Let's go on ahead and promote that to a variable. Now let's set the forward axis and I'm going to leave mine on the X axis. Finally, we need to attach the mesh component to the spline component. So for this, let's use the reference to our mesh. We have attach actor to component and attach component to component. Let's select this one. Attaching component to component means we're going to select attach our target, our mesh, to our parent, our spline. And let's leave the transforms in the relative or local space. Also a very important thing is that we need to go back to our add spline mesh component and in the details panel let's select our mobility to movable. Otherwise if it remains static you're going to get an error and you will not be able to see the spline mesh. So go ahead and keep it selected as movable. If we go on ahead and reattach our spline loop and let's select play, we can see that our mesh has is being generated, but it's not following the spline. Let's come all the way over to the very end and let's select our reroute and our delay nodes and move them over a little bit. And let's get the reference to our mesh and let's select set, start, and end. You should already be familiar with this node from working with it in the construction script. So we want our spline mesh to follow the spline. So for this, let's get a reference to our spline. Let's type get location and tangent at spline point. And let's leave this in, in local space. Let's go on ahead and make a duplicate and select spline point one as our end and attach these. Now when we select play, we have our spline and our spline mesh component following the mouse cursor hit result. So let's go back and recap what we've done. Off of the begin play, we got a reference to our player controller. We set a console command just so that we can see our spline while working with it. We added a spline mesh component, got a reference to it, we set its forward axis, and we attached the mesh to the spline component. For our spline, we set our first spline point to the, to the actor's location, which is our default scene root, and that is in world space. And for our second spline point, we set it to wherever the mouse cursor is at. Then we set the start and end points of our mesh, which is being updated to wherever our spline points are at. And finally, we set the delay, which loops back to the set location at spline point one, so that both of these nodes will update every 0.1 seconds.